What's going on, everybody? Anthony Servino here, Face Off Sports Network, with my top starts and sits at the quarterback position for NFL Week 3. Let's get right into it. Let's start with Brock Purdy. And Brock Purdy this year has been solid. Obviously, week one against the Jets, he didn't really need to do a lot. Only 12.7 PPR points, 19 29, 231 yards, no touchdowns. It was really the Jordan Mason show. But against Minnesota, playing from a negative game script most of the game, puts up over 21 fantasy points, 319 yards passing, one touchdown, one pick. With no CMC. No Debo. Brock Purdy has to put the team on his back. Brock Purdy wants to get paid. He's in line to get paid. A lot of the Brock Purdy detractors say, well, he has so much talent around him. He's in the system. Can he really do it without his stars? Well, he's out. He's going to be without two of his biggest stars. In the aforementioned CMC and Debo Samuel and Brock Purdy must now put this team on his back. And it starts with an outstanding matchup against the Rams. This Rams defense, it is hurting without Aaron Donald. Week one, it was okay. Week two, they got smashed by the Arizona Cardinals, notably the coming out party of one Marvin Harrison Jr., Kyle, Kyler Murray did whatever the hell he wanted. And now Brock Purdy gets the opportunity to step up and show the world, hey, this is a big-time spot. This is a must-win game for both teams. I'm missing a couple of my top guys. I deserve what's coming to me. Now, Brock Purdy, in his career, played one game against the Rams, solid, not great. Just over 16 fantasy points, 206 yards passing, one rushing touchdown. It's going to have to change now. Brock Purdy, he put up 300 last week. He's going to have to put up 300 again. He might even have to throw a couple. But you can do it against the Rams, right? This is the great matchup. The Rams have conceded the fourth most fantasy points to enemy quarterbacks. Over 448 yards passing combined through the first two games, two touchdowns. They've also have conceded, uh, I'm sorry, 483 yards and four touchdowns through the air, another seven for 60 on the ground. That first stat line I gave you was the Cardinals. But the Rams, week one, Jared Goff, they actually held him in check at home, which is hard to do for Jared Goff. Like Jared Goff in Detroit, we know he's great, but the Rams kind of held him in check despite the loss. But again, Last week, in Arizona, Kyler Murray, 31.2 quarterback points, 266 yards passing, three touchdowns, and they also let Kyler scamper for 59 yards on five rushes. Brock Purdy, he can do similar. I, I get you're without CMC. You have Jordan Mason who stepped up, so it's not like they're going to stack the box and send pressure. Brock Purdy is going to have a chance to throw to open receivers. And Brandon Ayuk, this guy just got paid. He hasn't done a damn thing. He needs to step up. You still have George Kittle, all-world tight end, who's coming off a terrific game last week. This has to be the Brock Purdy show. If you're in a bind, you have to st start Brock Purdy, right? You might be a two manager. Uh, you know. Some other guys are struggling, like Trevor Lawrence, who we'll get to later. Brock Purdy, if you have nothing else, this is the game to start him in. He should absolutely give us over 20 quarterback points. And if he doesn't, the 49ers lose, then that's a totally different conversation we'll be having next week. Let's go to Derek Carr, who's been one of the best fantasy quarterbacks this season. But I want to go back to last season when we talk about Derek Carr. Because, yes, Derek Carr has benefited from the Clint Kubiak offensive coordinator change from Carmichael. But dating back to last year, Derek Carr has given us over 20 fantasy points at the quarterback position in three out of the last four games to end last season. 
plus in each of the first two games to open this season. He's throwing up for yards. He's throwing touchdown passes. Derek Carr is doing it all. He's starting to look like the guy he was with the Raiders, which still is baffling that Josh McDaniels couldn't stand Derek Carr that much and he pushed him out of town. Just think with the weapons like Adams and, and, and Bowers and Jacoby Myers, just think what Derek Carr could be doing for the Raiders. Feel bad for that fan base, but let's get back on track with fantasy. Where Derek Carr, like I said, over 23 fantasy points in each of the first two games to start the year. And now you get another good matchup against Philadelphia. Philadelphia, as I've said all offseason long, their defense has talent. I love the Vic Fangio uh, defensive coordinator addition, but it's young talent. They have two rookies in their secondary getting a significant time. A lot of first and second year players all over the place. It's going to take time for these guys to gel, especially learning a new system. And Philly's one and one. They've shown vulnerable vulnerabilities and that they're susceptible to the big play through the air. We saw that with Jordan Love and Jaden Reed in week one. We saw that with Drake London, and we saw that with Darnell Mooney in week two. Now, this is another opportunity for Derek Carr, who all this guy does is create big plays to Rashid Shaheed. This is another chance for Derek Carr to go absolutely crazy. And Derek Carr, there are some leagues he wasn't even drafted in. You know, we talk about J.K. Dobbins and what he's doing for fantasy managers. If you picked up Derek Carr, you absolutely positively need to start him unless you have, like, one of the elite guys like Lamar, like Josh Allen, like, you know, one of those guys, uh, one of those quarterbacks playing out of their minds right now. Well, guess what? Derek Carr is playing out of his mind right now. And in this matchup against Philly, you have to keep him in your lineups. Philly, before we move off, he they've given up 20 points to Jordan Love. They've given up 20 points to Kirk Cousins. I see another 20-burger coming for Mr. Derek Carr. Let's close it out with Jared Goff. Now, Jared Goff through two games. He doesn't look like the Jared Goff of last year because what do we know about the Jared Goff of last year? The Jared Goff of last year at home, and since he's been with the Detroit, and really since he's been in the NFL, Jared Goff at home is an excellent quarterback, is an excellent fantasy quarterback, but that has not been the case this year. Jared Goff has played two home games. They're one and one. Jared Goff has given us 15.6 and 15.9 of fantasy. That's mind-blowing because he was lighting it up. And, and what's even more crazy is that this Lions offense have they, they have Jameson Williams popping and breaking out? That's another big play weapon. In theory, Jared Goff should be going crazy. But last week against Tampa, Tampa punched him in the mouth. Now, Jared Goff did throw for over 300 yards. He didn't throw a touchdown. In fact, he threw two interceptions. This isn't the Jared Goff at home we expect. Last week, only 5.6 yards per attempt. Things need to change, and things need to change quick. And I did say Jared Goff at home is normally good, which means Jared Goff on the road isn't. But this is a dream matchup on the road. This is a dream matchup on the road, visiting the Arizona Cardinals. This is probably a big-time shootout because the Cardinals' offense, they're firing on all cylinders, and they're red hot, and they have confidence after smoking the Rams. They're hosting the Detroit Lions. I believe this is a must-win game for Detroit at 1-1. People thought this would be a 2-0 team. They could be suffering from a, a NFC title game hangover, which means Jared Goff, he needs to pull it together. He needs to step up, and he has to have a big day. And what a team to get when you need a big day. In the Arizona Cardinals, they've given up a ton of fantasy production of quarterbacks, most of it coming in week one. Josh Allen went for 34 and a half fantasy points in week one, 232 yards passing, two touchdowns, and then nine for 39 and two on the ground. They obviously held Stafford in check last week, but let's face it, he didn't have Puka. He lost Cooper Cup. This game was over before it started. I think Jared Goff walks into Arizona and gives us his first respectable fantasy game of 2020. 
four. Let's go to my sits, Anthony Richardson. And this is a tough guy to sit. We drafted him thinking, and I said it myself, Anthony Richardson is going to break fantasy football if he's healthy. And week one certainly looked like that over 30 fantasy points. But he only completed nine passes in week one. Only 212 yards, two touchdowns, pick. But he ran 656 and one. And that's the difference with Anthony Richardson. Now, last week against Green Bay, couldn't really get it going. He did complete 17 passes out of 30. So they they out of 34. So they threw more, but only threw for 204 yards, a touchdown, and what really killed him, three interceptions. Then he rushed four for 37. But Richardson, despite three picks and despite only one touchdown, and despite not rushing for a touchdown, despite only 204 yards, he still gave us 17.9 fantasy points, which is actually respectable. But that's not why we drafted Richardson, and now the matchup gets tough. Now you get your toughest matchup of the year against the Chicago Bears. This defense is pretty good. And Chicago's defense, they faced Will Levis. They kind of erased him. And this is a Will Levis who kind of looked a little bit better against the Jets. And then C.J. Stroud, you know, everybody loves C.J. Stroud, right? He, this was this guy was being overdrafted, in my opinion. C.J. Stroud, only 16.9 fantasy points. And this was a game where Nico Collins went off. Houston won, but only 260 yards, one touchdown. This Bears defense, notably, their secondaries for real. And I think this is going to be an extremely, extremely tough matchup for Anthony Richardson to get anything going. Let's go to another sit. Trevor Lawrence. I don't trust this guy, folks. And I do the Roto Wire show with Jim Coventry. And all off season long, Jim was all over Press Taylor. This guy shouldn't be calling plays in the NFL. What is Doug Peterson doing with this OC? And help the gate. It's been a train wreck for this Jacksonville offense. Now, granted, Miami and Cleveland top seven teams against fantasy quarterbacks, but Trevor Lawrence has not surpassed 220 yards. He's only thrown one touchdown this year. No picks, but only one touchdown under 221, oh, under 220 yards in both games. What are we doing here? There is a regression somehow, some way with Trevor Lawrence. We're not even getting rushing upside. Now, he did rush for 45 yards last week, but no touchdowns. Like, it, it, you know, Christian Kirk. He's been invisible. I, I get that Evan Ingram, uh, you know, didn't play last week, but what the hell did he do in week one? Gabe Davis and Brian Thomas, your target leaders on offense. You know, they're, they're conceding touches from ETN and Bigsby. Like, like things are not right in Jacksonville right now. And now they get Buffalo. Now, Buffalo's middle of the pack against quarterbacks, but, you know, they, they played Miami. And we know Tua went down. They were kind of controlling Tua anyway when he was playing. Then they they totally demolished Skylar Thompson. Uh, and then week one, uh, Buffalo, that defense kind of limited Kyler Murray, 16.8 fantasy points, 57 yards rushing, 160 through 30 air, and a touchdown. Like, this is a pretty good Buffalo defense at defending quarterbacks and defending the pass. So I'm out on Trevor Lawrence. I need to see him do it before I can trust him again. Let's go to my final sit. That's Matthew Stafford. Folks, Matthew Stafford, I, I get you want to use the, oh, it's Sean McVay. He's going to figure it out with what he has. And what he has is Tyler Johnson, Demarcus Robinson, and Whittington. Maybe Tutu Atwell, Iron Williams. A banged up offensive line. I don't trust the Rams this week. And they get Stafford. And normally Stafford, very solid against the 49ers. Uh, since joining the Rams, uh, Stafford has given us over 19 and 20 fantasy points in all but two games. But he is down some of his best guys. Cooper Cup, Atwell, Higby. I mean, I mean, uh, not Atwell. Uh, Cup, Nakua, Higby. The rant, they can't protect him. And we saw that last week against Arizona. And now you get the 49ers coming off of an embarrassing loss in Minnesota. This is a must-have game for both teams. I think this defense could beat up Matthew Stafford. I think it could be ugly once again for the Los Angeles Rams and Sean McVay and Stafford and company. And I get this 49ers defense. You could throw on them. 
But can they protect Stafford enough to allow him to throw on them? Can DeMarcus Robinson, Tyler Johnson, and company get open enough so Matthew Stafford can throw on them? I'm a little bit worried here. I cannot start Stafford this week against the 49ers in the current state of this team. And I get they are at home. And this is the home opener. I just don't trust it. All right, guys, we're going to wrap up from here. Those are my top start sits at the quarterback position. I'm Anthony Servino. Remember, if you like content like this, hit the subscribe button, the alert icon, so you can be notified anytime we drop content like this. Or we go live to answer your questions. And if you have any questions, you have any takes, you don't like my takes, you don't like my shirt, you don't like my hair, you don't like my Muhammad Salah doll behind me, let me know in the comment section. We love talking to you. Until next time, I'm Anthony Servino. This is the Face Off Sports Network. We're going to wrap up.